afternoon. Assalamualaikum Pak Dikan. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke. Yeah. Prof Claudia, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Oke, okay. yes. Uh, Bumul, uh, selamat datang Bumul. Uh, Paula, silakan bisa dimulai. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the committee, we would like to extend our warmest welcome to participants of the third chemistry education webinar entitled Curricular Innovation in Chemistry. We thank God Almighty because over the blessing and grace we can gather at this event. The Honorable Dr. Mardiana as Dean of Teacher Training and Education Faculty, the Honorable Dr. Rernat Srimulyani, as Head of Chemistry Education Department, the Honorable Our Invited Speaker, Professor Dr. Claudia Borman Linde, the Honorable Lecture from Chemistry Education Department, the Honorable Invited Guest from our partner university, and all the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, before we come to the main session, let us start the third chemistry education webinar virtually with a team Curricular Innovation in Chemistry by Praying First. Pray begin. Finish. Ladies and gentlemen, here I'm Paula Diasmita. As a master of ceremony, will guide this webinar. Let me deliver the structure of this event today. As follow, the opening, the speech from the head of chemistry education department, the speech from the dean of teacher training and education faculty, mention about curricular innovation in chemistry, question and answer session, and the last is closing. To start our program, Now we invited Dr. Arnat Srimulyani to give the first speech. Times is yours. Okay, thank you, Paula. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asrofil anbiya ibal mursalin. Wal alihi wa asabihi ajma'in. Yang saya hormati, Bapak. Dekan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan, Bapak Dr. Martiana. And the Honorable, the invited speaker is also the main speaker, Professor Dr. Claudia Burman Linda. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Ich mata, yeah. Ich mata, um, me for Stalin, ich bin Sri Mulyani, a uh, slider der Chemis und Didaktik. <laughs> um, Profesor Borman Linda, ich wünsche Ihnen alles Gute und viel Gesundheit. <laughs> ya, besonderes unter den gegenwärtigen Bedingungen unter denen di COVID-19 season. Ich weiß, ya, yeah, when she ended with. <laughs> okay, and all respected yes, uh, the participant who have attended here. Hello? <laughs> okay, and my colleagues, um, Dr. Pat Norma Yunita. As moderator, and also maybe uh, for my colleagues for on the university, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome all of you to this uh, the third chemistry education webinar conducted by study program of chemistry education, Splash Smart University and study program student association Kovalen. <laughs> uh, this theme uh, of this webinar is curriculum, uh, curricular innovation in chemistry. Yeah, according this theme, we will uh, get information about the development of the current um, chemistry curriculum, I think. Yeah. For that, let's see together something interesting in the chemistry curriculum. I truly uh, believe that today's attendees will definitely make this webinar fruitful and productive. <laughs> I hope, yeah. <laughs> Finally, I would like to thank the Dean of the Teaching and Education Faculty who has been pleased to attend at this webinar and to give a speech. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I also want to thank um, to all my colleagues and especially my students <laughs> who work together to host this webinar. Many thanks to all the teams for a good job. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 
Thanks to Dr. Arnett Sri Mulyani for your speech. Our next session is the speech from Dr. Mardiana. Time is yours. Thank you, Ms. Paulia, Paula. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning for Prof. Claudia Freeman Linder. Good, good morning. Uh, <laughs> the Honorable uh, Prof. Claudia Freeman Linder from University of Wuppertal, Germany. The Honorable Dr. Renat Mulyani, the head of Chemistry Education Department. The Honorable Lecturer in Chemistry Education Department, invited guests from our partner universities and all participants of the webinar. Prof. Claudia, uh, welcome to our webinar in the Department of Chemistry Education, Faculty of Teacher Training, Universitas 11 Maret. We are very honored to have you here to improve uh, graduate competitiveness at the global level. My faculty continues to accelerate faculty international international education program. Department of uh, Chemistry Education manages the program in the collaboration with international office in, in line with awareness effort with World Class University. One of the my international program is visiting professor program in the term of webinar. We invite top scholar from partner universities to share their expertise and um, the knowledge and so on. On this occasion, our students will learn very interesting and essential topic based on your experience in curriculum innovation in chemistry education. We do hope the partnership between UNS and Unity of Wuppertal Germany could, could go further. For example, joint research and publication and other activities. Thank you very much for your knowledge and, uh, and experience sharing. Uh, so we, uh, I would like to express my appreciation to all participants who are talking part in this uh, webinar. We thought you all and the activity would not have been possible. I hope uh, you enjoy the activity. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to meeting you again in person. That's all my speech. Uh, thank you. Thanks to Dr. Mardiana for your speech. The next event is the main session which will be guided by Dr. Payet Nurma Yunita. She is a lecturer in Chemistry Education Department. Time is yours. Thank you very much, Paula. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, Professor Claudia. <laughs> okay, uh, the Honorable, uh, the Dean of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Dr. Mardiana, um, the Honorable, the Head of Chemistry Education Department, Bu Mulyani, Ibu Dr. Renat Simulyani, and then lecturers in our department, all of lecturers in Chemistry Education Department, uh, some our invited guests from partner universities, and also participants that we have uh, also lecturers, we have teachers and also students from Chemistry Education Department. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, Professor Claudia, or I, I call it Claudia. <laughs> Claudia, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I just try to uh, find your. To make it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Pak Mardiana and Bumol, uh, Professor Claudia from uh, University of Wuppertal is 
the first our collaboration is in 2012 that we remember we sent four students from our department that's from international class uh, program to Pertal mm. for one month that Joko and uh, Prof, friend. Uh, with Prof Taus yeah no yeah way. with Prof Taus yes <laughs> uh, that's the first the first time I met Professor uh, Claudia and then mm. uh, with with all of the good research group and then uh, the development of the uh, curriculum innovation in their department uh, that's why we we invite today because uh, Professor Taus is already retired and now Professor Claudia Berman Linda is a uh, as the successor of him. Mm -hmm. So Professor Claudia is 2015 or 16 is a professor in University Tubingen, yeah, Claudia? And then oh, start uh, the, uh, the associate professor is in Wuppertal and then the full professor in Tubingen. In Tubingen. And then in 2018, she moved uh, to uh, not replace the Professor Tau's place in uh, mm -hmm. University of Wuppertal. My doctor Agret is in Tupingan and uh, Dresden, Ah, okay. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are in, in Tupingan also for mm -hmm. one month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's the, I, I, will, I will read the short bio of uh, Professor Tupingan, uh, Professor Claudia. Professor Claudia is graduate from uh, also teacher training in, uh, in the fach of chemistry, so in the the field of chemistry and English. So her English is uh, very good. And then uh, she also had a uh, experience about the teacher training program like we like we call PPG here. And then uh, for some years, she also uh, have a work experience in University Duisburg Essen, right? And then before you uh, move to Wuppertal, to begin and then to Wuppertal again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the interesting thing about the department in Wuppertal, University of Wuppertal, is uh, the Wuppertal Detective of Chemistry is one of uh, representative of experimental conceptual chemistry detective. So it means that uh, so many innovation in curriculum, the content, uh, how to uh, deepen the content knowledge, uh, so like we see in the website of University of Wuppertal in Chemistry Didactic, everybody can access the website. The website is very uh, interesting with all of the, the thing, the tools that they use. Uh, Future-oriented topics, that's the main uh, focus of the research, is such as light energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, and we can see also there, uh, there is a fuel cell project, and then digital media, and also they also some years ago have a project in bilingual chemistry untri, so bilingual chemistry learning. Maybe uh, Professor Claudia will, will tell later after the main uh, topic that they will share. Okay, <laughs> it's about Professor Claudia and also from uh, about the department because uh, I already share about the experience here in our department, Bumol and Bapak Ibu, that we have also a, such a experimental course for students but it's not yet connected to their final uh, thesis or undergraduate thesis. It means that we can we can learn from you from the department how we can connecting or pre, uh, bringing the innovation in the chemistry itself to the didactic. That's why Professor Claudia Berman Linda, one hour time is yours, please. Thank you so much and good morning to everybody. It's a great pleasure morning. for me to be morning. talking. You can, can you all hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm going to share my slides with you. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that it will work. Norma and I tested it two days ago, yes. so it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we have a tech test two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope now everybody is able to see my starting slide. Yes. You can also see some pictures that are representative of some of the experiments that we develop in our um, institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, the agenda for today's talk um, is coming now. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Norma has already done some of my work. <laughs> That's oh, no. very <laughs> Thank you. Because we already explained a little bit <laughs> about okay. what we are doing. Um, I want to go into a little bit uh, more detail 
because I think that some of you are not familiar with how um, chemistry education is organized in Germany. I want to give you a little uh, impression of our university and then I come to the main part of my talk and explain how we do research in curricular innovation. And when I prepared this, I thought a good idea would be to show you a concrete project that we do. Uh, and it's called Exploring Energy by Experiments, e to the power of three. <laughs> so um, before I come to this main part, I'll uh, talk a little bit about the basics that students need to understand this project. And uh, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about their prior knowledge. But let's start at the first part. Okay, so Germany is um, a country of 80 million people. And you can see this, uh, sorry, it's, it's labeled in German, <laughs> but you can see all these uh, colored uh, spots and uh, Germany is divided into 16 states. Um, it's a federal system. Uh, in Germany, we call this Länder. So every state is colored in a different color. And right now, I'm sitting here at the tip of this arrow in the city of Wuppertal, which mm -hmm. has about 350,000 people. So if people talk about Germany, they mostly know Berlin, which is right here. And they know Munich. It's very famous. It's down south. Maybe they know Cologne, it's got a very famous cathedral. And Wuppertal, well, it's not uh, that big that you can actually find it written on that map, but I put the arrow on the correct spot. So this is where I'm sitting. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, the education is organized by each state. So each state can in some limits and boundaries decide how to organize educational affairs. Um, but there is a head, a German head, uh, and it's called, it's got a very long name, Standing Conference of the Ministers of Education and Cultural Affairs of the Länder in the Federal Republic of Germany. To shorten things up, we call this KMK. So this is the head and uh, they have, um, some, um, some um, decisions on what every student in Germany should learn, but then it's up to the states, to each state to uh, differentiate in which, um, in which um, what, what comes first, what comes next, uh, in which year uh, people learn chemistry and so on. So it's not really that easy to say, chemistry is taught in Germany in this way, because there are many ways. But I try to, to find some uh, general lines that I can explain to you, so it's easier to understand uh, what the system is like, and um, then I talk a little bit about how we try to get our innovations into the system. <laughs> so when school starts, the children are at the age of six. First they have kindergarten, but then they start primary school and they go there for four years and there everybody is together and afterwards our kids are streamed for ability so with different kinds of schools um, if people think their children are quite talented and they may further on want to go to university they go to a school uh, which we call gymnasium um, and there's grades five to 12 or 13, depending on the state. So this is um, the higher level. And then we've got schools where students uh, who are not really sure if they, or their parents are not really sure if they will continue on to university, they go to um, the other school, which we call um, Hauptschule or Realschule. Uh, some countries put them together, so it's, it's a bit different, and I just uh, summarized the grades, and they go on until grade 10, and then they can decide if they want to go on to gymnasium uh, in order to maybe later on go to university. In order to do so, people have to finish this school, secondary education, um, with um, an exam which we call Abitur, 
And this is necessary if they want to go on to university. Um, so if someone has an Abitur, uh, we at university know, depending, uh, or we know what they should have learned at school, because there are some learning outcomes defined by the KMK. So um, even though the system is a little bit um, <laughs> muddled, I could say, um, still there is uh, defined learning outcomes, uh, what students have to have learned when they finish with grade 10, and there are learning outcomes, what they have to have learned when they have got their Abitur. And, um, but the way towards this changes from country to country a little bit. So there's 16 different ways, but nevertheless, chemistry is the same all over the world. So <laughs> just the ways are a little bit different, maybe. Um, what we do in um, Germany is that we don't start with chemistry very early. Um, at primary school, um, there are first approaches to science on a very basic level. So school kids learn uh, not the chemistry or not the physics, but they learn something about natural sciences to understand the world around them. When they move on to secondary education, everybody has to take each special subject and chemistry starts depending on the state in grade seven or in grade eight. So the pupils who start learning chemistry are about 13 years old. And um, they have got two hours of chemistry per week and they have to have this for three years. So when they finish school grade 10, everybody has to has learned chemistry for six hours per week sometime during their studies. Mm -hmm. So this is what everybody who leaves school in Germany uh, should have had and should know. <laughs> um, we start, um, because the children are quite young, we start uh, with phenomena from everyday life. For example, when we want to introduce chemistry and chemical reactions, we think about things from home or from everybody, uh, everyday life, like making a cake. So these pictures, for example, they are from my school book and um, they are uh, taken when I made a cake for my daughter. So uh, first we've got some things we put in and afterwards, hopefully we have something tasty that gets out. So we have a, a change of matter. And this is how we try to, to, to get our children involved with chemistry, um, phenomena from everyday life. And then we go on to make simple experiments first. Um, I just copied, you don't have to read this in detail. I just want to get uh, you an impression of how we approach chemistry. Then um, we move on via experiments because we are convinced that chemistry as a, an experimental science should be explored first by doing experiments, by watching them, by uh, um, explaining them and then finding some general concepts and rules. Um, at the first beginning, we have to do a lot of didactical reduction. Um, for example, in the first year, we don't have um, equations, chemical equations with formula. We have word equations. Again, you don't have to read this. It's just uh, you've got the word of uh, iron, for example, reacts with uh, sulfur. And you just write down the word of the educts and the products in a very simplified word equation. So it's, it's a very smooth approach to learning chemistry. Uh, then year after year, we are getting into more details. And then we actually introduce formulas. We do chemical calculations. But it's done very softly, basically. And uh, we always are driven or taken our first look at um, approaches from everyday life via experiments towards the rules and, and systems and definitions. And then we again apply this. When the students move on uh, in grades uh, 11 and 12 or 13 and 12, 
depending on the state where they are in, they have the choice to take chemistry. Uh, if they don't want to continue learning chemistry, they have to take a different natural science. So um, they, if they do choose to take chemistry, um, there's two year courses on different levels. You can do it on a very basic level or, or quite basic level. And this is three hours a week. And those students who think um, they might want to study some sciences afterwards, uh, take advanced courses for two years and they have five hours of chemistry per week. So that's quite a lot of input. And that's very valuable if you have those students coming to university because they have got a very good um, start at, at university. And uh, again, I just, uh, for an impression, uh, to show you that it's not only baking cakes that we're doing in chemistry. <laughs> um, we also then uh, look at uh, different um, and uh, more complex systems like proteins, and uh, we do things in electrochemistry, but always starting again from, uh, from everyday uh, life concepts. Um, in this case, it's just uh, something about uh, secondary and tertiary um, structures of proteins. Then you show the intermolecular, um, 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 <laughs> how they, uh, the molecules interact with each other and what uh, the attractions, that's the word. And um, for example, we have some uh, more complex and innovative aspects that we also um, take as addition to um, the general um, things students have to learn. Uh, so we can open up some uh, interesting fields of research at school already. It's not compulsory, but we want to get them some taste of what they later on can explore if they decide to, to study chemistry at university. So um, we're starting very simple and then moving on to more complex um, things. So, once you've got uh, your high school diploma, you can go on to university. And uh, maybe that's also interesting for you. That's why I included this uh, also. Um, if you decide to become a chemistry teacher, um, then you have to go to university. And a specialty in Germany is maybe um, special German that um, you not only study chemistry, but you study two subjects. And you can combine chemistry with anything. For example, I studied chemistry and English. Uh, we've got students who study chemistry and maths or, or physics or biology, but some even do physical education or um, whatever. <laughs> so you are free to choose um, the combination of the two subjects that later on, once you're a teacher, you are going to teach. And then of course, everybody has to do a little bit of pedagogy so this is not um, of the same importance uh, looking at the hours everybody has to study, but um, it's, it's a small third subject basically that you have to study. And um, most states, there's two exceptions, uh, have a bachelor and master system and uh, the bachelor studies are three years. Uh, if you want to become a teacher, you have to do the master as well. So there's two more years and then you've got a master of education and uh, this is the first step. But it's only the first step or second, depending on how you count. Um, if you want to become a teacher at an official, at a state school and our teachers are uh, state uh, employees with a special security um, concerning their jobs, for example, um, you have to do two more years uh, of internship. I think you've got something like this in Indonesia, uh, some special teacher training. Um, and uh, depending on which kind of school, the, the higher one or the ones for the kids um, with learning difficulties maybe, um, you have to do your internship at this kind of school for two more years and you are teaching uh, while being supervised and you also have a part of your hours of teaching uh, individually so you are all responsible for everything um, and there's also didactic seminars once a week every um, intern has to go to do those seminars and finally finally after that um, so it's, it's seven years <laughs> if you calculate this you are finally a teacher and you've got the state exam to, to actually be a teacher. 
So that's a long way um, of, uh, of getting there. And um, our university um, is uh, well known for teacher education. Um, you can study any subject that you like here uh, and any subject that is offered at German schools. And um, we're quite big and we're almost 50 years old. In 1972, there was only this field and a black and white picture. I couldn't find a colored one. <laughs> and this is how this field from further times is looking now. So lots of construction going on. You can see this here. And um, actually I'm sitting there, sorry. Just wait, I'm sitting. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sitting here where you see the uh, yellow um, um, circle. This is the latest building that has been built here and this is where uh, the Department of Chemistry is situated. We've got six faculties and a school of education that is responsible for teacher training and they are doing all the organ organizing work. Um, in chemistry, uh, as I said, we've got this brand new building here, and there's a sculpture by uh, um, Tony Craig. He's a very famous uh, artist here in Wuppertal. It's called To the Night. It looks quite nice, I think. Um, so this is where I'm going uh, every morning uh, to go into my department of chemical education. We also have inorganic chemistry. We have food chemistry, which is quite special. There's only four universities in Germany that you can uh, go to if you want to study food chemistry. We've got micromolecular chemistry and management of industry processes, analytical chemistry, organic chemistry, and physical and theoretical chemistry. So there's 13 professors, full professors of chemistry at our department. And as Norma already said, we've got a homepage Unfortunately, most of it is in, in German. If you click on the, the, the British flag, you, you will find some English words, but I want to uh, uh, draw your attention to this. I think it's, it's uh, understandable. Digital medium, digital media. This is where you can find lots of videos and animations and so on. Just click your way through. Maybe you will find some things that you might find useful. But uh, this is so far um, enough for an introduction to the German school system and how uh, you become a teacher and we train the teachers in, in the bachelor and master degree and um, we also do research naturally and this is what I want to talk about uh, for the rest of my talk. So what we do here as Norma already said and everybody who so kindly introduced me, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, we are doing curricular innovation research, and I want to explain you what the underlying principle is. To start with, there's a very trivial fact that uh, we can see or deduce from these two pictures. The trivial fact is that our world is changing. So as the world is changing, the things we use the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the media we use, and the teaching we ex uh, explore or we, we experience has changed as well. In those days, there were teachers who had all the knowledge and who had all the apparatuses. Today, students can get information everywhere very quickly and they've got the information source in their pockets. So this dramatically changes the role of teachers. It dramatically changes also maybe the questions of uh, students because they get information they might not understand. And uh, it's a chance for us to uh, create media that are readily available for students. Um, what we do in our curricular innovation research is we try to open up fields from research and technology, cutting edge topics, topics that we now, in a way, we have to prophesize, <laughs> we think might be relevant for the next decades. Um, the German system is a bit 
slow. Um, it takes a while until new contents actually diffuse into the con uh, into the, the, the system and then uh, actually find their place in the standards um, that are uh, defined by the KMK, uh, which tell um, teachers what to teach. <laughs> so uh, we have to deliver <laughs> topics um, that are still relevant in the next 10, 20 years. And um, the challenge for us is first to understand, then to um, make new experiments which are suitable for school. That means we've got very strong safety regulations, for example. I think you've got the same problems uh, that uh, many chemicals are not allowed to be used by students at school. So the challenge for us is to find new experiments that are suitable for school, that are low budget, um, that can be carried out in relatively short time, and that show the general principle of something I want to explain. And that means we are not designing high efficiency cells or something, but we're doing didactic experiments which show the basic steps and which can be understood starting from knowledge which is defined by the KMK. So we always have to have a, I call it didactic anchor, not something to start from where I know everybody knows this and now we can move on to things maybe the students haven't and never heard of. In order to help teachers to introduce this for school, we develop didactical concepts. And it's always starting from the well-known, moving on to the innovative things. And then as a second service or third service, uh, we are um, actually uh, producing teaching and learning media. And this is uh, school books, for example. Ha, it's advertising. This is my latest school book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also make um, videos, we make um, animations, um, all kinds of different learning sources to, to help students to understand what um, this is all about. So this is the general way we do curricular innovation. And then we have to test the things we um, thought about <laughs> and developed. And we are uh, testing and evaluating this. We've got a student's lab here at university uh, where students are invited with their complete classes and the teachers also come. And then we test our experiments and concepts with them first. Then we do teacher trainings. And in this iterative process, we uh, constantly try to uh, optimize our materials and products. So um, they are fit for school, we could say. <laughs> and um, through these teacher trainings um, and our um, involvement in, um, in the committees uh, who define the learning standards, uh, we are able to actually get new contents into the, curricul uh, into the curricula, uh, but it, like, it takes a long time. <laughs> So um, in the first approach, it's a grassroots thing because we start with the teachers. And once the teachers are um, uh, interested and think this is valuable, then it actually grows into the system and this is the other way around. <laughs> okay, so what is the subject or the contents we deal with? Now I just first de describe the way we, we do our work. What we um, focus on um, looking at chemical contents is um, the main thing could be subsumed under the word energy or the concept of energy. And we've different um, concepts here and it's basically uh, mostly uh, concerned with energy conversions. For example, using light energy in solar cells, using uh, the conversion of, uh, of chemical energy into electrical energy in fuel cells. We are uh, dealing with, uh, or we're developing concepts and experiments on uh, modern displays technology where you've got the conversion of electric uh, 
um, energy into light energy. Uh, we've got projects making thermal energy visible. Uh, this is with, um, with uh, um, infrared cameras in the chemistry classroom here. You can't see anything in, with your eyes, but the, the sensor of a, a thermal uh, camera can actually detect uh, that heat is released if you make a neutralization reaction by adding some, um, some, some hydrochloric acid to, to sodium hydroxide solutions. So um, this is also something we, uh, we uh, look at. Then we also look at different display technologies, have got uh, concepts of uh, talking about liquid disc, uh, crystals in connection with organic chemistry and uh, condensation reactions. And uh, we uh, try to integrate uh, sustainable use of resources into all these projects. So this is the topics uh, we focus on right now, and we've got lots of projects. Um, I want to use the rest of the time uh, <laughs> I have to um, um, explain or to introduce to you um, a project, uh, the project E to the power of three, <laughs> so exploring energy, uh, energy by experiments. Mm -hmm. And um, before I actually show the concrete program, we are going to look at the basics that students know. What students know if they come to our students' lab or if they would do this in, uh, in their classroom, we also offer this at summer schools and so on, they know uh, different kinds of forms of energy. They know that energy is conserved and not used. They should know, I should say. <laughs> they know about energy conversions, that energy uh, is not produced, that is just converted from one uh, kind of energy to another um, with some heat losses, for example, um, depending on what we know, uh, want. What they also know, and this is, um, don't worry if this is in German, because the gist is just uh, understandable just by the, the symbolic language. <laughs> They know something about the electromagnetic radiation. They know this from physics and from chemistry. Um, they know that chemical bonds um, contain different kinds of energy. And there's some uh, wavelengths of light needed, for example, to split this if you do some light induced um, um, reactions. And they know, for example, I just took out the things they know uh, that are relevant for the project. Um, they know something about the electrochemical series. This is what they learn um, at, uh, when they take um, chemistry after um, year 10, so starting on with year 11. Um, this is what they know, and um, this is basically um, all they need to know to understand the rest. <laughs> so, um, Let's come to the first kind of energy conversion that is, into, uh, that is looked at in our program, and that is the energy conversion in solar cells. And again, here we start with things that are classic or known from everyday life. And that is something that you see here on the right. Uh, what you can see there is a little solar panel, something you can buy for schools. There's ready-made kits for this. Uh, you can also take little tools. I've got this solar bug. It's like a little uh, well bug <laughs> with a little solar cell. And um, students uh, know these cells from every day life. What uh, they should know, sometimes they're not aware of this, but actually they should know, is that in these cells, uh, there's the conversion of light energy into electric energy. And um, something we tell them is um, that um, silicon-based solar cells are very um, well known because they've got efficiencies greater 20%, depending on the type of cell you use. Um, they uh, should know or get to know that silicon is ready, uh, readily available from silicon uh, dioxide. What they mostly don't know is that silicon that is necessary for solar cells solar grade silicon is very energy consuming, that you need very, very clean silicon and to uh, have this production of solar grade silicon is very, very energy consuming. This is what they don't know. 
And um, when we look at um, the, the sunlight and the spectrum, and then you can actually see that in the visible range, there's, uh, well, quite a lot of um, um, solar radiation coming down to Earth. And what we confront them is a question, are there alternative solar cells? Um, alternative solar cells that could be produced without the energy consuming silicon that is uh, solar grade. And then we move on to something you probably know, Gretzel type cells with titanium dioxide, because this is easily used, uh, can be easily used in schools. Um, so this is the first question. The second question we are coming to um, uh, leads to, or the topic is first of all fuel cells. And students should know fuel cells from everyday life because there are those kits also that you can buy for school. I don't know if you've got these uh, kits also that you can buy in Indonesia. Actually, it's like a puzzle. You can uh, stack this together and screw this together and then you can actually use this uh, ready uh, made um, fuel cell. Um, it's an alkaline fuel cell, which has been used uh, for decades already. So it's, it's a classic, we could basically say. And those are direct converters. Um, they have quite a lot of uh, high um, electric uh, efficiency. And what students know, they know that hydrogen is a fuel that is used. They know that oxidizing agent is oxygen. Uh, what they sometimes don't know, I always ask, do you know how hydrogen is produced? Hmm. <laughs> they can think about electrolysis and they say, okay, but think about industry, uh, big scale production of hydrogen. How, how do we get this? Uh, mostly they don't know that it's made from natural gas, <laughs> which is a fossil fuel. And then we think about um, sustainability again. So. What we come up is, or what they know, is the simple equation that in the fuel cell, hydrogen and oxygen react to form um, water. And then we come up to the second question, are there alternative fuel cells? Because if you think of hydrogen, and we are not at the stage where we have only green hydrogen, uh, we can maybe think about different fuel cells. And then we come to biological fuel cells that can be used uh, or driven by microorganisms, for example, baker yeast that we use for baking bread. So everybody should know this and it's cheap. <laughs> um, the third and last <laughs> topic um, that is necessary for our E to the power of three project is looking at photosynthesis. This is something everybody knows as well. It's already taught at school at different levels, starting very on a very simple approach in biology in grade five already, but then at a more sophisticated level in grade 11. And the students know that, um, that light energy is needed to produce um, energy sources such as um, starch and, and cellulose and, and uh, hydrocarbons. And um, so they know it's the basis of life uh, on our planet. They know that there's a light reaction, that light is absorbed by dyes. They should know, sometimes they forget, that it's uh, all done by a cascade of reactions where electrons are transferred via redox reactions. Uh, they know that uh, photosynthesis is a way of, of fixing uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and uh, forming biomass. What they sometimes don't know is that photosynthesis has a very, very low efficiency, but nevertheless enough to get our planet where we are. <laughs> okay, so um, they basically also know um, the chemical reaction that uh, sugar, um, this is just for glucose, uh, the, the, the formula and oxygen react to yield carbon dioxide and water, uh, other, the other way around, that those are formed by the reaction of carbon dioxide and water. And um, this is photosynthesis and the way back is respiration. Okay. Um, what they sometimes don't know is that um, you have to look at the kind of light which is accessible and used. Um, if you've got high, uh, a certain concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, 
and you've got a very um, weak light, then photosynthesis is not as effective as if you had a very strong light, which is logical. <laughs> okay, but sometimes they are not really aware of um, the fact that light might not be the same as one kind of light, one color of light is not the same as the other color of light, that there's different energy contents depending on the wavelength and the intensity. So what we uh, come up as a last and third question is, is there also artificial photosynthesis uh, possible um, with the formation of other energy sources? This would be maybe then real green hydrogen. And this is the third question. And um, this now finally leads us to the project. So what uh, we do or what we have done, we uh, explored this program or we are at the stage where we've got a selection of experiments which we have developed during the last 10, 15 years at different stages. And we put this together into this project uh, because we want to focus on energy conversions because uh, we have seen that uh, students sometimes don't really realize that energy is only converted, even though they should know this. Um, there are some misconceptions about energy being produced or destroyed, and <laughs> then it's gone. And we try to, to use this program to work, uh, to, to, to get rid of these misconceptions. And the principle is that classic <clears throat> always needs an innovation. <coughs> Sorry. So we've got three stations and we've got the energy conversions that I already talked about. And we also have the classics that I already talked about. We've got, we start uh, with the first station with silicon solar cells, uh, then move on to photo galvanic titanium dioxide cells. It's not the Gretzel cells yet, it's a didactic bridge, basically. In the second station, we start with the well-known alkaline fuel cells and move on to the microbial yeast fuel cells, so biofuel cells. And in the third station, we start with the classical photosynthesis. We've got these uh, water plants, um, that you can also use for aquaria, aquaria where you have your fish, if you have fish at home. <laughs> and um, it, it's called Elodea. And um, then you can actually see that they produce uh, oxygen when they are irradiated with light. And then we've got, um, this is thanks to my predecessor, um, uh, Michael Tausch, um, the photo blue bottle experiment as an experiment that is uh, um, an experiment, model experiment for photosynthesis. So it's, it's artificial synthesis. And a PhD student who is now working here in my group actually um, was able to, um, to continue with these experiments and um, optimize it. So there is a new um, way um, of actually, or a new modification of the experiment, and he can actually produce hydrogen. That's quite nice. Um, you don't have to read this again, just as an impression for you. We start always with the classic, have got pictures, and we uh, give the students some uh, instructions how can they can carry out the experiments. They should note down what they have seen, and then they get very concrete um, 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 tasks for uh, the evaluation of the experiment. They start with a the classic, they move on to the innovation where we give them again the same structure. And in the end, we try to get the classic and the innovation together and try to find uh, combining principles or the same uh, or analogies and um, uh, parallels. So what do the students do? Um, for example, um, they use, we really like to, to work with these uh, torches. I don't know if, if you use them at school, um, for example, in, in chemistry or so on. We've got really nice torches with differently colored light. This is blue, this is green, this is red, and then you can take also white light, for example. They are very cheap uh, to use at school. And what the students do is that they irradiate those solar bugs um, and they can see, or I don't know, do I have some, some I do have some more time. Can, I can show you if you want. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then I just have to switch on the other camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe stop the sharing, then it's better to see. Here you've got our little solar bar. And if I irradiate this with blue light, it doesn't do anything. If I irradiate this with green light, it doesn't do anything. If I take red light, it doesn't do anything. But if I irradiate this with white light, it starts moving. Okay, so it's a very simple experiment. It's playing, basically. But um, we can use this um, to um, show the students that light and light is not always yeah. the same. There's light of different wavelengths and the, these kind of lights, I say, has different energy. So we have to get the right light source. Uh, all the cells have to be uh, uh, have to, 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 to uh, be constructed in a way that they can actually use the light that actually shines on them. So that's the first approach. Mm -hmm. um, then we move on to, um, to the innovation, um, going away from the silicon. And um, we introduce titanium dioxide. And titanium dioxide is in everyday products such as suntan lotions. It's uh, in, in uh, the white color that we use to, to uh, paint our walls with. It's um, a food additive and so on. So it's quite nice to use at school as well. Um, and then we have experiments that I think this very nicely shows the connection to the, the standard uh, topics in chemistry. Uh, we start with an experiment where we use titanium dioxide as light sensitive uh, um, semiconductor in a cell that looks pretty much like something they know from school. This looks, and this is basically, like a galvanic cell because you've got two containers, you've got electrolyte, you've got some electrodes that you put inside, and so they see something they know, but they enter a new topic, and this is um, the semiconductor, titanium dioxide, which uh, can capture our light, and if it is irradiated, we can actually measure a photo uh, current or a photo voltage. Uh, now, this cell is not very effective, but I think it's didactically very interesting because it shows the, 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 the parallel structure of, of the well-known galvanic cells. And then we can move on. We can say, okay, if we want to have a solar cell, what, what has to change? And then we, we actually think with the students together, uh, okay, it's got to be more compact. Uh, maybe it shouldn't dry out and things like this, so practical approaches. And then we have um, a more compact um, setting where we move from two pots to one pot. And finally, to uh, a sandwich-like structure, which you can see here. And um, it has the photoelectrode with the titanium dioxide. Again, uh, we've got um, the... Um, the electrolyte, which is um, EDTA, uh, the, which you use for, um, uh, for, for titrations when you um, look at hardness of water, because you can, uh, um, you can um, via titration, determine the concentration of calcium, for example. So um, this is um, an electrolyte they know. And um, actually, uh, what takes place inside the cells uh, can be explored either by pictures, if you have got the semiconductor and you irradiate the titanium dioxide with light, you have the formation of electron hole pairs. So electrons are promoted into the, into the conduction band. And if you've got something in the electrolyte which is able to stuff that hole, the electron can't move back. It's going outside into the outer circle, into the outer circuit, and then you can measure a photo current. So this is where our electrolyte comes into play. Um, if you don't have these static um, 
um, pictures. Uh, we also have, and I want to show you this very quickly, um, we have some um, animations that we use to explain things, just to give, I want to give you a broad impression of experiments, of uh, videos and of animations. So now we start uh, with an animation, which I have to open up for you. Um, you should be hopefully seeing this. Yes, okay. So there we've got uh, animations on the way it works. And we've got um, here the titanium dioxide grain with electrons in, um, in the valence band. No electrons right now in the um, conduction band. You've got some donating species and you've got some accepting species. And if you um, irradiate this with light, you can see that electrons are promoted into the conduction band and look at the hole. The hole is going to be stuffed by some donor who is being oxidized. So as the electron can't jump back, it moves out into the outer circuit. Now you can see this moving out exactly and a photo uh, voltage then actually um, rises. And now this stops. I think this is long enough to uh, get an idea of uh, how we try to, to do this. Uh, if you've got um, not um, a multimeter measuring the voltage, but you lower the resistance, then you can actually power a little motor, which has to be very sensitive. And then you have the electrons moving onto the counter electrode. And there they can actually reduce some accepting species which in this case would be uh, the production of, of hydrogen here as well, but very, very, very low concentrations. You can't see this bubbling or anything. So uh, what I wanted to do with this, I wanted to show you some example of, of, of media that we uh, also develop in order to, um, to make students understand um, what is going on inside those cells. Okay, so um, this is the innovation that they um, get to know. And um, then um, we uh, irradiate with this with different colored light. And then we can see, oh, the white photoelectrode doesn't really work with colored light. We have to, um, to make changes. And then we can move on to, to the Betzel cell, which has actually a photosensitizer. There's lots of works in Indonesia, I know, <laughs> on these cells as well. So uh, I'm not going into detail here. But this is just um, a classic and uh, an innovation that we uh, then talk about. Starting from well-known topics from chemistry, they every, uh, everybody has learned at school or is learning at school. And then we show them that there's, um, this is um, a topic which is relevant for research because there was this very important nature article back in 2001 um, of Michael Gretzel, who actually uh, proposed these cells um, for, for as alternative uh, solar cells. Then later on, the Renaissance was already uh, celebrated and uh, there's more than 25 years now, it's 30 years um, of low cost solar cells. So this is a topic which is still highly relevant. If we're looking at the world's problems today, we can see that, um, that uh, having energy available for everyone around the world is just a pressing topic. And so we need to, to get these kinds of, of, of topics into our curricula. And this is uh, how we do this step by step. Um, the other two stations um, that are part of our project, I won't talk about as long as I've done so far, so don't worry. <laughs> and I just to give you some more impression, um, it's, it's always the same setup. They get a classic, they get an innovation. And um, the classic here would be um, um, an alkaline fuel cell. And um, here we show them some very simple model experiment. And in order to give you an impression of the videos we produce, I want to show you some uh, uh, always a representative of each type of media that we do. Um, 
I'll show you a little video that we did in order to um, show um, how uh, low cost um, school uh, <laughs> ready to use um, low, no, uh, suitable for school fuel cell uh, can be worked on. So I go into the video with you. Sorry for jumping so much, but uh, it doesn't work the other way with Zoom. And I'm going to find, hopefully, it's gone, just wait. Um, yes, now I can find it again. I'm going to show um, and to share a video with you. You should be seeing um, a red background and some material. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so what we do if we um, make those videos, we do this very formally, step by step. Um, there's always uh, markers where you can jump to in our most modern videos, where the students can actually see um, which chemicals they need. In this case, it's very simple. It's just potassium um, hydroxide solution. Um, then we show them the materials they need. And we um, also label them because some of the students forgot how this is named. So these are the German names, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is crocodile uh, clips, alligator clips. Um, I want to point out this, those are our low cost platinum electrodes because we found that from the electric shavers, you know those foils, those razor foils, not, not the blades, but the razor foils. It's a perforated um, metallic um, foil with, with little holes inside. And if you uh, buy the ones um, in Germany, it's, it's uh, the company Braun, they are coated with a very, very thin film of platinum. That's why they are so expensive. Uh, but the, the main material is nickel and lots of people have an allergy. So um, the higher quality razor foil, but you can use the ones that you don't need anymore in your razor, in your electric razor. Um, we use them as low cost platinum electrodes. Mm -hmm. So that's quite nice, um, reusing things or recycling things. <laughs> um, and um, then step by step, um, we show what is needed for, for the experiments. And we always say uh, how it is called. So uh, if students don't know anymore, they, they know what is meant. And uh, then we give them um, a, a sketch if necessary, not always. Um, where they can then again see how they have to set up the experiment. Um, and in the experiment I show you, there's a first part where we actually first have to produce our fuel. So don't, uh, don't worry, this is part one. And then we use the produced uh, um, hydrogen uh, in the second step. So then they, show, they are shown how the experiment is done. We highlight what is important. So the electrodes are put into the um, uh, potassium hydroxide solution, and this is our technic technician, <laughs> Frau Reisewitz. Uh, she is applying a voltage. You can also take a battery, it doesn't matter. And then you can see quite nicely how uh, the gases are produced. Uh, of course, the first step is electrolysis, and this is something they have taken at school. Um, Claudia, you play the video or not there? Can't you see it? Uh, we, we see, but it's aesthetic. It's, it's not playing. It's not playing. Oh, and I'm talking and it's playing all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. It's, we, we, th we think that we, you, you uh, haven't started yet. <laughs> I did, I did. It, it was running all the time. I was looking. Okay, okay. Let's see again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, now. Can you yeah. see something? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so just for a short impression, what I've been talking about was these razor foils here, and then you can see actually the labeled uh, materials. Yeah. Uh, you can see the sketch. You can see how this is starting. Now you can see the hand of my technician. <laughs> oh, that was too bad. <laughs> Okay, and then, oh, now you can actually see her head. <laughs> and 
and then she's turning on the power source. And now you should see, we always then go into a close up. You can see the gases emerging. Yes. Okay. And um, this is the first part. Okay. Um, and now comes the main part where we have produced the, um, the gases. And then um, my technician is uh, um, connecting a little motor to the cables and there's still gas attached to the, um, to the razor coils, to our electrodes. And now it's basically, before this was preparation, uh, we can see if or that, <laughs> um, I, I, I stopped this deliberately and I'm starting again. Uh, <laughs> look at the motor, please. <laughs> yeah. That actually the motor is turning very fast. Um, uh, and this is driven by, uh, this is also um, the time is, uh, is uh, fastened. And at some time it'll then stop. Um, but you can see that with very, very simple um, material, you can actually um, make a uh, low cost fuel cell in um, the school setting with, uh, without buying those expensive uh, solar cell kits, for example. So this is an example of another low cost experiment. Um, now we're in my slides again, I hope. And what we do then as a next step is the biological fuel cells. Uh, usually, uh, always, you have two compartments um, as we had before. So we always show the similarities and then move on to the new stuff. Um, in this case, we've got an anode with a biocatalyst and we've got some cathode and um, the cathode needs again some, some oxygen and there's water produced. And in this case, uh, as we are talking about biology, uh, biological fuel cells, some substrate is turned into a product. Now, if you want to do this, uh, for example, with sugar, then you need sugar, you need oxygen, and you need some microorganism. And this, in this case, is baker's yeast. We can take the dry baker's yeast that you can buy in those little satchels. And actually, um, in a simplified uh, depiction, we simplify this here because I think um, it is okay to do so. And uh, for students, it's, it's quite good to grasp. We've got um, the, um, the, the production of carbon dioxide and water as overall products. And this can be done uh, via low cost uh, setup again. And this is what um, a PhD student has developed we take very simple stuff. As an electrolyte bridge, we just take some toilet paper and uh, you can take filter paper as well. Um, as electrodes, we take iron nails and as, uh, as uh, electrolytes, we take glucose solution. And in the one compartment, we add a little bit of yeast. And then once you put everything together, you can actually measure a voltage which is uh, produced by the reaction I showed here, because in the steps in the oxidation and reduction, you've got uh, the, the flow of electrons basically, uh, and the electrons are forced through the outer circuit. So this is also a low cost experiment that we can take with a very um, um, a setup that is close to other uh, cells they know from electrochemistry. And uh, here you see the picture, the photograph, it's very simple. Uh, you can also take graphite um, um, rods. Um, we actually took them out of, of pencils, but you can buy them as well. Um, so it's again a low cost experiment on a topical uh, cell type, which is used, for example, in living organisms. Uh, because you can uh, monitor, uh, uh, you can use glucose from your body as an electron source, um, or you can use those fuel cells um, to monitor the glucose concentration in your blood and so on. So there's, um, there's also um, uh, connections made to modern um, 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 research and technology. And once you start this, you get actually um, uh, voltages up to 500 uh, millivolts. 
um, this is um, oh, sorry, um, a different setup where um, the PhD student took uh, iron electrodes. We just tested everything uh, what was suitable. And we took this um, from the sock sled extraction um, apparatus, this, um, this uh, paper part you can take uh, from, from if, when we buy fresh egg, they're in, in paper cartons in Germany and we cut this out so it's low cost again, you can take this as well. You just need some kind of a compartment where you put in the yeast and, and glucose um, um, solution. And then you've got um, a biological fuel cell to open up a new um, topic of, of research. Uh, if you take sac saccharose instead of glucose, you get a very similar result. You get a, a voltage, uh, but it starts later on because first um, saccharose, um, it's a, a B uh, saccharide. It's got to be split into fructose and glucose, and then the enzymes can do their work. So that's quite nice to, to, to um, make a connection to, um, to um, the carbohydrates that we have to talk about in, uh, in uh, German curricula as well. So you can either start from, from electrochemistry or you can start from, uh, from the carbo carbohydrates. Sorry. Um, and we always make clear where the connections is and what they already know and what they can use, actually. So Let's come to the last bit. Um, I already talked about the, the photosynthesis. We look at this. Uh, we've got this, this water plants there. Um, we have um, basil. Basil we used quite a lot for cooking in Germany. Um, I don't know if you know this. It's, it's uh, irradiated. We irradiate this with differently colored light and then do a starch. Uh, uh, test and then you can actually see again light is not always the same it depends on the wavelength and the um, the plants need uh, light which is suitable to to the absorption of chlorophylls for example and there's this uh, this green gap in the spectrum and then you can actually see that those leaves have uh, produced less starch than the other leaves that were irradiated by red and, and, and blue light for example um, so this is uh, dealing with a classic that they also know from biology. This uh, aspect of differently colored light comes in with chemistry and the test um, is uh, suitable here as well. Again, in connection with uh, natural um, 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 things uh, such as carbohydrates. And then we go to the, um, the innovation and I'm going to show you the model experiment. Um, just a second. I need to store this in a dark place. So I had to go to my cupboard just a second. And I'm showing you the photo bottle experiment, um, which is done as artificial uh, photosynthesis. And um, this is the very basic thing at first. I'm switching cameras. So, okay. I'm switching. Oops. Oh, I have to turn this around. Okay. Even a little. Sorry for uh, for readjusting this. Now you can actually see my bracelet. That's nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, now you can see two uh, containers, which are filled with a yellow substance. Ah. Okay. Try to get this into focus. It's not that easy. So this one is half full. And the other one is completely filled. Now that's getting better. Um, still struggling with the camera. Okay, what I'm going to do is to irradiate those two. Oh, I'm sorry about this, but I want to get this more into focus so you, you get a better side. Yeah, that's yeah now it's good. Ah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again, I've got a torch and um, I'm irradiating this and 
since I've got two hands, I'm trying to be artistic and take the other. So I'm sorry, I'm right-handed, so <laughs> it's very difficult for me. <laughs> okay. Now I'm irradiating this with two torches. Takes a little time. Always difficult also for me to be patient. starting but it's, it's not visible in the ah oh, yeah it's starting it's starting okay i should be more patient <laughs> okay so at school when we say we need an experiment which is suitable for school then uh, our school hours take 45 minutes. Uh, don't worry, <laughs> this is going to be faster. Yeah. <laughs> but our school experiments uh, then actually have to, uh, or we try to get them uh, organized that they are to be carried out in at least, uh, or uh, the longest should be 30 minutes. So you get some time for introduction and some time for, for actually summarizing what you could see. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think I'm just doing something to speed things up a little bit. Um, okay. I'm irradiating the second one um, with, um, with uh, two torches next to the camera. I'm not having a third or a fourth uh, vessel here, no, don't worry. But I think what you could see already is that um, the solution partially turns blue. Now, this turned blue because of the radiation with light. If I shake this, and I'm just going to shake the complete thing, you can see that the blue color has disappeared again. So the light must have started some kind of reaction and, oh, this is a better, this is more intensive, the light here. <laughs> um, so the reaction can be reversed by shaking and it can be state, started all over again by irradiating. So what we are producing is something which is blue in color. We see some, yeah, you can actually see this. And once you shake this, Oh, wait, shake again. You actually can turn this back. So it's a, a reaction which goes the other way around. So we've got uh, a starting reaction that we need when uh, that we need light for. And when we shake it, there's air inside. When we shake it in air, it goes back. Now remember photosynthesis, we need light uh, to produce something and um, the other way around, the respiration, there you need oxygen. We've got oxygen in here. And in our second vessel, oops, sorry, I put this into here, which was completely full. You see, we actually have the same, but now I shake it. And I can't get the yellow color back again because it's completely filled and there's no oxygen. So with this very, very simple experiment, I can show that the back reaction needs oxygen uh, just by, um, by ha having a half filled and a completely filled um, reaction vessel again. So this is, you can do very, a great number of cycles at some time, there's no more oxygen in, in the vessel, so it shouldn't work again that you um, get, the, get uh, the yellow color again. But uh, it's, it's very simple and um, the solution lasts quite a long time. So um, 
then you actually are able to, to have a, a model reaction for the light reactions of photosynthesis and the back reaction. <laughs> okay, so I'm moving to my slides again. So I hope you can see this. Yes. So what we've got is a photocatalyst, a substrate. We've got an oxidizing agent, which is um, oxygen. And don't worry about those uh, symbols. We just do this as a very first approach. And we, again, have something that is oxidized uh, in our case, which is quite nice. It is um, EBTA again, which we had in the photogalvanic cell already. So um, this would be a first approach of a model experiment for photosynthesis. And um, we can do this with differently colored light again. And we can then actually see that there's um, one color of light which is especially suitable. So this always goes hand in hand from station to station. Um, we can actually have um, this, uh, this experiment uh, in a new version where you've got um, hydrochloric acid and a platinum electrode. And then you actually can first um, irradiate the yellow solution you get the blue um, high energy product. And uh, then you can actually connect this with a hydrogen half cell. And then you can have the formation of hydrogen. Um, there's again, very few bubbles, but enough. Uh, Richard, my PhD student, um, he, he extracts this with a little syringe and then does a very small uh, detonating gas test. That's so quite nice. Uh, so again, we've got the same scheme. We've got a photocatalyst. We have um, some uh, the production of an energy-rich product. Don't worry about the symbols; it's just the, the concept. And then we can actually talk about uh, the formation of other uh, high-energy compounds and compare them to the energy-rich compounds that nature actually produces. So um, this would be our third um, our third station. And then we, um, we look at everything um, in, uh, together and uh, say, okay, have a look at each station and have a look at what kind of energy was needed and uh, which energy conversion took place. So this is what the students then finally um, um, subsume in, in a scheme like this one. And um, then we try to, to, um, to get, more uh, sensitive about the language we use when we talk science and uh, when we read newspaper articles and things like this where you find renewable energy energy production and consumption and we want to make them aware this is also uh, something that um, the, um, the curricula have taken up language sensitive learning um, that we think about the way we uh, use words to explain phenomena from nature and, and technology. And then we want to, to have a critical look at, at this kind of, of language and, and see if there's misconceptions uh, connected with this. Uh, for example, production, we can't produce energy, we can only convert energy. So this is, is uh, also um, um, an aim that we try to, to reach. To sum up, <laughs> you were very patient <laughs> with me. Um, we are um, integrating cutting edge topics. Uh, and we do this if we can link them to classical contents. We show them, you know this already. This is also good for the teachers because there's not too much new things or, or there are new things, but they know where the didactic anchor is. So this is where you can start uh, what, with the things you, only, uh, you always have to, to teach. And this is where you can go to if you want to uh, motivate your students to, to get into one of these uh, cutting edge topics. Um, we try to, um, and this is also um, demanded by the KMK, we um, have to um, um, integrate thinking about sustainability into every subject at school. Uh, it's, it's German, it's, uh, it's physical education, it's arts, it's uh, English, it's chemistry. So um, here we can also make a contribution to thinking about sustainability and sustainable learning. 
uh, we try to have always series of experiments that we take a look at um, and try to, to understand that energy conversions are an overriding principle here. Um, we use media in order to help students understand processes, especially on a particle level. And videos, if you've got some uh, time consuming experiments, so you, you can also make them accessible for teaching. And uh, last but not least, uh, critical questioning of everyday language helps, uh, helps uh, teachers to promote language sensitive teaching. So we're trying to, to, to uh, serve all these demands <laughs> and uh, answer these challenges uh, with our projects as well. I want to finish my talk uh, showing you people who are very important for the development of some of the experiments um, that I talked about today. Now, this is my group, um, and we are in front of our nice building. Um, Dr. Diana Zeller has worked on titanium dioxide um, cells. Richard Kremer has done the adaption of the photo blue bottle experiment um, with the, the hydrogen production. Julian Wenzlaff has worked on the um, photosynthesis with a differently colored light and so on. And Rebecca, she's a little bit hidden here. Um, she's the PhD student who is doing the biological fuel cells. We've got financial support. And last but not least, I thank you so much for your attention. It's been a long talk, but I hope I could give you some impressions of the diverse things we do, experiments, uh, animations, videos, and concepts. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Claudia. That's a very, very insightful uh, presentation. And then we can see uh, the uh, innovation, the technology there uh, developed in the Wuppertal chemistry didactic, especially. Uh, I'm sure that many questions rise in our mind, our <laughs> mind today is uh, 15.30 now. Uh, please, everyone that you, when you have a question, please uh, use the raise hand uh, menu there. Please, you can raise hand or using any kind of uh, emotion there with a clap, clap or anyone? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, okay, I can recognize this voice, Claudia. <laughs> you recognize the voice or not? Yes, I do. And I see the face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, good to see you again. Yeah, it's a great to see you again, Professor Claudia. It's, I'm so excited to join this um, seminar this afternoon from Indonesia. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope, hope you are still remember me or recognize me. I do, me. I do. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Then That's I have fun. some question related to the uh, related to your presentations. Uh, first question is about the. Uh, do you implement the research of your university to the school? Are you uh, collaborating with the schools to implement what you have done uh, from your university, from Wuppertal University? And then if you do so, then how do, uh, how can we assess uh, the, uh, to, to, to see the understanding of the progress of the students? And is there any skill that we can assess from the experiment that you have conducted uh, with your group uh, at the Wuppertal University? And then the last question uh, related to the battle light blue, uh, after you are irradiating the uh, fluorophyll or something, the, the green color, the, after you irradiating the color, and then it is become uh, blue or something, blue. right? Blue. If, I, if I'm not mistaken. And then how's the color stability? How's the color stability of the changing? It is still, uh, it is a uh, permanent or it can be- uh, Reversible. Yeah, it, is it uh, reversible or not? That's, that's my question. Thank you so much, Claudia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Joko Susilo. Uh, Claudia, now uh, Joko uh, is a high school chemistry teacher in, uh, for the gifted students. That's the special school for the gifted. Wow. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so he should learn more. 
because yeah, like, yeah. your your uh, research is more about innovation. That's that they they need there, right, Pak Joko? Right, right, right. If, <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. if if it is possible, can I get the paper? I mean, the instruction in English, so I can implement uh, the the experiment with my students here. That would be great. Do the research there, not ask. Oh, me. okay. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay. Okay, Claudia, Thank you. you. Can the questions, please. So, so if if you want, I can also send you the slides and the selection of of English papers with the. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Thank well, you. Then you can spread them to whoever is interested. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So. Mm -hmm. um, First question was, uh, how, do we or how do we implement this at school? And um, the first approach is that we have cooperation with a number of schools in the area around here. And we invite the teachers with their classes to come to our lab at university. Um, we do this because we've got all the material here and the teacher doesn't have to worry about getting everything that is needed at first. Maybe they don't like it, then they don't have to buy things and stuff like this. So we invite them to our students lab here. And uh, the special thing <coughs> is also that our students who want to become teachers, we also train them on these experiments and concepts and then our PhD students and the students who want to become teachers, the master of education students, they work together with the students from the schools coming and they've got small groups and they supervise them. And um, after the experimental phase, the students from the schools do presentations. They work in uh, different groups. Not everybody does the same experiment. Mm -hmm. And then they introduce to each other what they have done and they explain to each other what they have done. And then we can see from what they say, how well they understood <laughs> or how well they are able to express what they understood. Sometimes this is two different things. Um, so this is the first thing. It's, it's also good for our students because they can uh, try to teach in a, in a small surrounding and it's quite nice uh, and we have more time to go around and watch and listen and talk and notes and so on. Uh, we don't have a written test or anything. Um, so this is our first um, approach here at school, uh, at, at, at university. Um, and we also train the teachers on the new experiments because this is something they haven't learned at their university time. And um, then we uh, have meetings. It's, it's half a year meeting, uh, so twice a year. <laughs> and uh, the teachers tell us about uh, problems they had or things they noticed and so on. So we try to, to um, improve um, animations. We try to improve um, procedures and things like this. And um, But we don't have uh, written tests or anything. So it's just by, by inviting them to our student lab, by watching them, uh, by watching what the, the students say, actually. It's quite revealing. <laughs> so that was your first question. Um, I'm not really sure about the second one, which uh, access still. I think it's, it's included in the first one, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah it is. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, you asked about the stability of the, the, the blue color. Um, yeah. It's, it's the energy rich form. Uh, so the yellow part is the, the low energy form. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as there is oxygen present, you would see that starting from the top where there is contact to the oxygen, mm -hmm. um, you would then see that it will turn green and after some, some time yellow again yellow. Mm -hmm. because uh, of the diffusion of the oxygen. Um, if you, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, it's a magic. It's like a magic, right? <laughs> 
the kids would love it. But this is the one, um, yeah. which was built, and you can see it's, it's stable mm -hmm. as long as there's no oxygen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we um, sometimes do this with a different lid, and then you can take a syringe with air or oxygen even, yeah. and then you can slowly uh, let some gas Oxy. And then you can see that um, as the color change the comes in, then the yellow comes mm. back. Oh, okay, that's great. Okay. But yeah. as long as there's no oxygen, this is stable. Mm -hmm. um, if there's too much light, we, we store this solution uh, in, a, in a dark cupboard. Um, if there's too much light, the original dye will then. Um, um, how do you say it in English? <laughs> Decompose. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Got yes. it. Thank you. But Thank you. Thank you. This, this has been <laughs> in here uh, for three months. <laughs> yeah. I haven't changed it. It's working. <laughs> okay. 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 That's good. So you can you can use it in a very long time period, but you call it even one <laughs> semester. <laughs> sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Claudia, uh, second questions. Okay, maybe it's from students because we have also lecturers, teachers, and also students. Maybe uh, some of you have a question directly. Uh, Claudia, here in Indonesia, I think it's also in some de uh, chemistry department, also in other universities in Germany. So we we not uh, to focus in the this experiment that you know, right? I, I told to you not focus to the content curricular, but how we how we can implement the innovation how we can uh, know the effectiveness to the students learning outcome that's the things this is the the, the good thing because you uh, uh, introduce more thing about how we deepen the the content knowledge and then the, the students in the university sometimes is weak of this this is too much pedagogy but it's not in the in the content that's why uh, we try to discuss it okay everybody in the chat a room you can you can use the chat box to uh, write your questions before i read the uh, i read the questions from pariza and azahra maybe you will have a question related to the experiment or how it works or anything that you want to ask this maybe from bapak ibu dosen norma saya mau tanya boleh oh sangat boleh sekali monggo bulina bulina please Time is yours. Okay. Uh, good, af uh, good afternoon, uh, Professor Claudia. Uh, in Indonesia, it's afternoon, but maybe it's uh, almost noon, right? In your uh, in Germany. It's a quarter. <coughs> oh, still more. Okay, still morning. Okay, <laughs> good morning then. <laughs> good afternoon to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, this is a really nice um, presentations and. Um, really interesting experiment uh, i have some que some questions yes uh, first uh, first i uh, want to know what is the considerations when you focus on the um, energy i mean like uh, all the experiments is related to energy right so what yeah. is the uh, what is the uh, uh, considerations you choose on this topic uh, is there any um, um, you know, any uh, relations with the the things that uh, maybe uh, the Ministry of the Education is want to achieve or whatever it is, and then the sec second one. Uh, so I s I heard that you apply this for the students who came to your uh, laboratory, right, uh, in the summer. Yes. Okay, so this is just like a short program. Uh, yes, it, it's uh, the, the single experiments have been developed over the last decade. No, no, I mean like for the, I know for the for the students, for the okay. high school students. It's, us. New, it's new, and um, it's a course that we um, offer uh, in the summer. We call it summer school. 
Um, then we've got some program, especially for girls. It's called mm -hmm. Girls' Day. Then they come and then there's only girls who do this project, but mm -hmm. it's the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, then we've got um, something we call Chemie La Boutique. This is mm -hmm. um, like um, an extracurricular activity throughout the year. So mm -hmm. the teachers, if they do electrochemistry, for example, And mm -hmm. they say, oh, I want to deal with those innovative uh, um, cells based on titanium dioxide. They can come anytime, basically, if we are available. Oh, okay, <laughs> right okay. Now we, we are not allowed to, to have them here because of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, if some teachers ask you or your uh, department that they have some difficulties in some or is in certain topics. So is it uh, possible for you and your team to uh, give the appropriate um, media or experiment related to this one, uh, to their, I mean, like their difficulties uh, in, this, in the subject matter? Uh, and then uh, how is the, What do you call it? Uh, because here in Indonesia, everyone said that chemistry is um, difficult, sub uh, difficult subject. So uh, hopefully with um, looking at your experiment and then uh, while playing, we also get the insight or, um, you know, the concept of the subject material itself. Uh, is it uh, also effective uh, in in German to, um, you know, motivate uh, yeah, students to uh, study chemistry. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. Okay, uh, it's a bunch of questions. Uh, I try to work to them. <laughs> yes, <not> <laughs> so the, the first thing was um, about why do we choose to deal with energy? And mm -hmm. uh, now energy is a basic principle The I, I talked a little bit about the structure and, and the competencies that uh, students have to gain during their schooling. And there's something um, called basic principles or basic concepts, basis concept in German. Mm -hmm. And there's three um, defined by the KMK. And one of them is energy. Okay. So, um, And this concept, there's also chemical reactions, energy. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I don't remember the third one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the interesting thing is that for the other natural sciences, physics and biology, mm -hmm. um, they also have three basic concepts and each mm -hmm. sci uh, sci science has energy. So this is a link to interdisciplinary Uh, um, um, collaborations also ah, okay. um, our departments and within schools so yeah. energy is a basic concept as well for, for physics and for biology so this is quite nice because we think it's a good linker mm -hmm. and um, we can show um, that um, in modern science uh, it is not possible just to do chemical uh, chemistry or just to do physics because everything is interdisciplinary. And so it's a good chance for us to take this basic concept. And you see, if you've got fuel cells, if you've got solar cells, uh, it's very uh, uh, natural to also think about physics and you can get the physics colleagues involved and say, okay, we can talk about this too from our perspective. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a quite uh, good um, uh, yeah, connecting thing. <laughs> So this is why we um, we thought that this is very valuable and it is needed because it, everybody has to deal with this in the sciences. Okay, okay. thank and, you. And um, this was your first question. And then you had uh, materials, difficulty, subject matter. I, I just took some little notes. Um, mm. I hope <laughs> I got this right. Um, when the teachers. Um, want to have our materials, I, I hope I understood you correctly, um, we um, have them here as a teacher training so they can learn how to deal with this and um, for our partners we can um, 
give them the materials um, for their um, units at school. Um, mm. We have this system where they can take materials from us and bring it back if they don't need it again. Ah, okay. um, so this is like some uh, lending, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. We've got those little suitcases mm -hmm. and uh, we, we put this inside. Okay. Um, the stuff they need, which they don't have. We are also preparing, but this is a little bit difficult um, to sell this to the teachers, but then we are a university and we are funded, uh, we are financed by the public. And then it's, it's always difficult to, to, to start to sell things. And then there's always those, uh, those questions of responsibilities and, and whatever. <laughs> so this is difficult. But with partner mm -hmm. schools, we've got this, this lending system. And then you said chemistry is uh, considered difficult in Indonesia. It's the same in Germany. <laughs> 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 if you ask, um, what is your favorite natural science? Mostly students say biology. Biology. Then comes chemistry and then comes physics. That's mm. uh, unfortunately, this is uh, typical in Germany too. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we're trying to do, and this works quite well, we try to, to get motivation as um, a core principle. Um, we try to, to show the students that chemistry is fun, that uh, chemists have dreams, that they are creative and think about it, like, like Michael Gretzel, who did the Gretzel cell. Uh, I'm always telling the students, look, Michael Gretzel, he had this vision. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to have uh, whole buildings um, with, with Gretzel cells instead of windows, just imagine. Uh, the sun is powering the whole building. You you don't have to pay uh, extra electricity. And he's still waiting for the Nobel Prize, but maybe one day he'll get it. Just just to think that to, to show the students that there's so much to explore, that there's people with ideas and dreams. And and I would say uh, tell the students you are the ones we are hoping for because you have to solve our future problems um, to get them involved and to show them that they can actually make a difference. And I think this is very, very important to, to tell the students that they have an impact and they, they are important. And with the knowledge they have, they can actually make a, a substantial contribution to make the world better. So sometimes, mm -hmm. Not just tell me the formula of uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, but just make I see Prof. Parker. <laughs> yeah. okay. Yes. Said, okay, sometimes it's just important to get to understand some principles. Don't worry about this special formula. We are looking at this because formulas are the, the key to, to understanding chemistry, yes, but there's also this other part, and I think we shouldn't forget about this. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you, Claudia. Thank you very much, Polina, for the questions and uh, for the answers, Claudia. Uh, from the students, maybe you have uh, any questions? Okay. But uh, I have two questions from my students in the first year, Claudia. This is from the first year. Also. Uh? No, no. Yeah. I want to ask. <laughs> oh, oh, Umur. Okay, Umur, you you come first. No, no, you you first. No, you first. Okay. Yeah. So I have a students here from the first year of chemistry education, Az Zahra Jasmin. Uh, she interested about the topics about the uh, uh, education system in Germany, uh, Claudia. So is it right that children will be classified based on their intelligence in the school system? That's the mm -hmm. question. <laughs> yeah. That sounds very brutal. And yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not having tests, and then we say, you go to a university. No. <laughs> um, it's um, in the first four years, everybody learns together. And then the teacher gives some recommendations. They say, I think your kid. Um, has some difficulties to learn things, maybe it's better to first go to Realschule or Hauptschule. Mm -hmm. And then they say, okay, I think your, your kid needs a lot of input and she's really eager to learn. I think it would be good to have her at Gymnasium, which is the higher level of school. But um, it's only a suggestion. The parents can decide where to place their children. And then we've got, um, if you say, my kid, 
I think my kid will uh, go to university one day and therefore I put it uh, or I, I give it to, to gymnasium, which is the higher school. Um, then at gymnasium, the first two years mm -hmm. uh, are thought as an introductory phase. No, but nobody can fail in that time. And after the two years, year five and six, then it's again a time where you decide, okay, is my kid good here or is it too demanding? Is easy well it's difficult then because then we need some special <laughs> schools um but then there's again a time of, of reflecting on the ability of a kid so it's, it's not a strict system it's up to the parents um who should talk to the teachers who hopefully give good advice um yes <laughs> okay yeah and if, if you if you first don't go to gymnasium and you you finish your grade 10 then you're still able to switch to go on to gymnasium and then do the final uh, two years mm. that's possible that's no problem and also uh, before that yes. yeah yeah but mostly then it's, it's after year 10 if you finish the other kinds of schools that you think oh am i going to learn uh, a real, a real <laughs> am i going to 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 start a job mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh, they do an apprenticeship here first which is again two or three years uh, or do I want to go on uh, to do school and abitur and that maybe study sometime? Ah, so it's, okay. it's open. we're trying to have it as open as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to the parents. Okay. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah, Azara Jasmine. Uh, hopefully, it is clear. Not but intelligence is only the uh, no. the focus of the uh, so the profession what you want to choose, right? Like the skills that you have more than the others. That's the things also that depend on what school that you want to uh, come to. Okay, mm -hmm. now please, uh, Bumol, your questions to Claudia. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, good morning. <coughs> good morning. Uh, can I call you Claudia? Or yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Prof. Claudia, thank you. Uh, your um, presentation is very inspirative, yeah. <laughs> uh, we can use, for example, uh, these uh, Thema uh, for these three experiment maybe with uh, suitable for the for the STEM uh, education maybe yeah Bu Norma yeah yeah yes <laughs> yes STEM education to. yeah uh, I want to ask uh, for the especially for the artistic uh, artificial photosynthesis yeah you can uh, you you have sold uh, this uh, light with a uh, 500, 500 uh, nanometer, I think. Uh, which uh, reaction uh, uh, will you short uh, occur in this uh, photosynthesis? When normally, uh, the normal the light is uh, in uh, 600, 600 nanometer. Can you yes. explain this one? Yes. Um, so if you look at natural photosynthesis, um, we've got the green chlorophylls uh, mm -hmm. with a typical absorption uh, spectra with the, with the green uh, gaps in between and the absorption in, in the blue and red. Exactly. So this is what you could also see with the basil uh, leaves where you had more or less production of, of starch. Now here we don't have a green solution, but we've got a yellow dye. And therefore, it is especially uh, good or effective to have the complementary color, which is blue. Um, maybe if I go back um, with some slides, just wait. Somewhere, yeah, there. I think this is what you were referring to, right? <laughs> um, there you can actually see if you irradiate the solution. Uh, it's difficult in the picture. Left would be. Um, ultraviolet light, the second would be blue, the third would be green, and the fourth would be red. And uh, then you can see that it's especially good to have the blue light because it's the complementary color of, of the yellow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we've got a different dye, different absorption characteristic. Oh, I saw, I saw. Differently colored light, yeah. which is next. Okay. Uh, but this is uh, a very good question that uh, one can ask the students too, because um, if you um, if you do um, 
um, chemistry at, uh, in the last two years. We also have to talk about dyes and color. And then you can ask them, <laughs> why do you think mm -hmm. do you differently color dyes, for example? That's quite nice. <laughs> Uh, and um, if you've got the advanced classes, you can also show the, the molecular structure of um, the chlorophylls, for example, and ask why this is this a dye. You can then see the, the, um, the, the p electron system and so on, and then you can talk about on this level. It's, it's quite nice. You can, you can do this in kindergarten with very very little children, and you can do this up to university, <laughs> yeah. depending on how deep you go into detail. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, all for yeah. the questions and the answer from uh, Claudia. Claudia, I continue for the question from Bu Mulyani that she said about uh, your experiments, your uh, the questions, the first question for uh, to stimulate the student is very close to the STEM, right? Mm -hmm. The mint in Germany is the mint. Is there any project or uh, what it's, we call it research in, in your labs on research group? Because I think some, some years ago, I also read about the MINT programs, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is um, do you mean MINT programs just MINT, from our university? Mathematics, right? yeah, in MINT. MINT, mathematics, engineering, like STEM, right? Yes, yes. STEM yes. education, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this, um, what, what in English is called STEM is, yep. is the MINT, yeah. Mathematics, information, natural sciences, and technology. Yes, um, exactly. And um, uh, huh, there's been great debates <laughs> on how to teach those subjects in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have the system that I try to explain to you. Uh, but there's always people who say, oh, we don't need special chemistry or biology. We can just say we teach sciences. And now this is very difficult because then uh, the teachers uh, are very free to do whatever they like and it's difficult to have uh, a, a comparable uh, outcome um, mm -hmm. throughout the whole kind of cohort of, 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 of students. Um, so um, MINT is right now just um, um, a conglomerate of the differently taught subjects and um, there is uh, a lot of um, projects to, um, to um, make students get involved with yes. MINT yeah. from the industry also. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, a, um, um, it's, it's called Verein in Germany. <laughs> I'm trying to find the-, the Verein right is a foundation? Kind yeah. of foundation, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, some kind of foundation, a MINT foundation, and we've got special MINT schools in Germany. Um, and schools can apply to become a MINT school. There's a special certificate, a label, uh, if they have, if they can say, we have advanced courses in chemistry, in the MINT subjects every year. We've got so many uh, teachers who can teach that. We have got so many extracurricular projects we take part in competitions and so on. So it's a real label mm -hmm. um, that uh, schools can apply for to get their special um, profile, basically. And education um, is also um, supported by the industry. Uh, um, yeah. so, but, but they are uh, dependent on the industry and the industry doesn't have a say in what is taught in, in chemistry and physics and so on. That's, that's a state affair. And it doesn't have to do anything with, with industry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, because the, the, the experiment, everything that when, when the student can design it very well, I think that's very good for, for, for them. <laughs> okay. And then the last questions. Uh, this is also from the first year students that uh, also curious maybe about the uh, studying in Germany, in Wuppertal. Is there a scholarship, everything that? maybe uh, information. That's from Fahriza Akbar Ramadan. That's uh, written in the chat box. Uh, yes, we yeah. have- if you, if, you, if you know the information only, Claudia. Yeah, uh, a little bit. I, I'm not the one who is uh, responsible for this, but yeah. we do have yeah. an office um, mm -hmm. and, and there's the German, uh, they are the German exchange yeah. program yeah. where you can apply for. And mm -hmm. I think in India there's uh, state programs as well for, for corporations or for, for sending students to, uh, um, to 
to university <laughs> yeah in germany so, uh, we we do have an office and uh, they uh, have um, the the formula and so on then if, if, if students come, um, there's um, a cooperation with the, the other university, and then you talk about what do they do here. Mm -hmm. um, they should be able, like in the in the bachelor studies, there's only German as the language uh, yeah. for teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is some classes in the master's course which are done in uh, in English, mm -hmm. uh, but not in master of education. I but yeah. then you would have to have a look at um, content uh, courses that you can use in Indonesia too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's uh, Fariza. Hopefully, that uh, motivates you. I, I'm sure that you are in the first year now, and then in some years you will have more information, and then uh, interested why you want to go to Germany or other countries. Yeah, thank you, Fariza and Azara Jasmine. That uh, had questions. Okay. Thank you for your answer, Professor. The Faris are there, right in the chat box. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, Claudia. I think it's more than uh, one and a half hour that I <laughs> over to you because it's an interesting topic. Uh, we know that uh, from your uh, presentation, there is so many uh, parts, so many aspects in the content of uh, chemistry that we can explore. Mm -hmm. you, you have one topic energy and then you can go so so deep and then to go explore many things that uh, uh, inspire us to, yes, to do the, your experience and then your sharing, your knowledge, your expertise, of course. Thank you very much, Claudia, uh, for your time. You uh, start very early. <laughs> Eight o'clock, you have already have a lecture. Thank you very much. And I... Back to you, uh, Bagus. Bagus, uh, I have a certificate for you, Claudia. Bagus, you can share the certificate for Professor Claudia. Uh, Norma, can yeah. we continue the cooperation? Uh, we we cooperation with uh, Professor Wuppertal and uh, Professor yeah. Professor Taus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now Poppy has shared the uh, certificate for Professor Claudia as our speaker in the chemistry education webinar today. Poppy is not, okay, that's the certificate for you. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, so yeah. Thank you so much for letting me uh, give you some insight into our work. It's always a pleasure and I'd be very honored if we can continue our collaboration. And All right. Yes. Once yes. COVID enables us to actually see in person. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia Pumol. Uh, I'm sure that uh, our memorandum of agreement with the uh, Professor Taos is already expired, and then we can continue discuss it yeah. for the renewal, yeah, properly, yeah. Yeah. Because in the next time, maybe do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even we can invite uh, invite it uh, as a guest lecture and also uh -huh. professor again. Yeah. Even in the pandemic, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. We can, we, we can do it or, also uh, by daring up uh, by internet, yeah? Yeah. Online. <laughs> by online. Okay. Okay. okay that's, thanks that's, thanks that's, very much. <laughs> closing statement <laughs> from you, uh, Claudia. Uh, if, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Claudia, you have a closing statement for this webinar? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I thank you again <laughs> for being yeah. able to share. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in, in trying out some of the experiments, we can uh, we can actually think about this um, mm -hmm. to, to some materials. And um, as I'm always interested in, in uh, getting uh, feedback from other people who try yeah. this out, I hope that the students are motivated to keep on <laughs> studying chemistry. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great subject and it's a great subject to teach. and. I think it's it's really important to make students and the pupils uh, understand that there's so much to explore and that they can do the difference and just just try to 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 get your own excitement about chemistry uh, and bring it to to the other people too. So so we can get away from this bad image. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And then that's the, uh, our main session is already over, everybody. Uh, the time is I back to you, to Paula, please. Thanks to Professor.
Dr. Claudia Bormanlinde for the information and knowledge which have been given to us. May it be useful for us and thanks to Dr. Payat Nurmayunita who have been led the main session today. And the next session is the Dora Price announcement of the most <laughs> And the, part, and the winner will be announced by Dr. Yeah. Okay, so this is a giveaway from the committee for the person who asked the questions. <laughs> so the committee will contact to uh, to do the further process for this giveaway. This, this is for the online courses, I think important for the students. Congratulations for Pak Joko, Bulina. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Oh, uh, Thank you. Also, Fahreza and Azahra Jasmine. Yeah, thank you very much. And that's the uh, giveaway we'll uh, send soon. <laughs> okay, Paula, now a photo session from. Yes, now the photo session. I will hand it over to the committee. Yeah, okay. Now it's photo session. Please turn your yes. camera, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, please. Okay. Uh, slide one. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. We have five slides, or how many slides you have? <laughs> Next slide two. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Slide three and four. In okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> Slide four. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Poppy is enough, yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Poppy. <laughs> I will continue. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all our webinar today. The organizing committee would like to express its gratitude to all the sponsors and partners who support this program. The honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the organizing committee, allow me to extend our gratitude for your kind attention and generosity to who to attend this program. Thank you for your participation and see you in the next chemistry education webinar. Have a nice day. Yes. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you Claudia. Opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, Bu Visa, Bu Zona from UNP. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you, Bu Nurma. Yeah, Bu Wiza. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> Oke, okay. terima kasih Bapak Ibu dosen, Bu Mul, Mantur Nuwun. Iya, yeah. kimianya kimia menjadi tidak sulit lagi ya. Mm -mm. <laughs> Tapi di sana itu memang apa-apa ada itu loh, Pak. Iya sih. Itu artinya tadi lah, Bu.